Welcome back to Novice Explorer Radio. The explorers are happy to be back on dry land after a very choppy ferry trip back to France. This week we drive over 400 miles as we try to cram in as much as we can into a week of travelling through France, including the Lavender region of Provence, the Verdun Gorge and a drive along the scenic Route de Napoleon all the way to the Alps and Lake Annecy. We haven't given France much of a chance to shine on this year's adventure. It has always been a transit route to get us to another country. However, during this week's exploration, we have been wowed, proving that there are plenty more adventures to be had. Bonjour. <coughs> Bonjour, welcome to France. This will be our first video from France, but to be fair, we've been here for a couple of days just recovering from our ferry trip and just general tiredness. Which... Yeah, we didn't enjoy the ferry and we had a few chores to do. So to be honest, yeah, like Meg said, we've been here a day or two um, and we haven't done anything that, that exciting really. So we no. thought we'd start today. However, um, as is often the case, we have not got ourselves a very picturesque park up, have we? Not much. Do you want to look? Me? No, the camera. <laughs> You've seen it. <laughs> So you now find us up Mont Ventoux. Nearly 2,000 meters above sea level. We thought this place was gonna be quite quiet. However, there's a shocking amount of cyclists and that is because this is part of the Tour de France. Yes, very popular. Uh, one of the pop most popular stages, I think, from what my dad said. There's been a constant flow since, I don't know, seven, eight o'clock this morning. It's insane because it took us so long to drive up here, let alone pedal. Oh. It's crazy. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to do this on a site <laughs> on a bike. Not that I'd make it, I'd probably pass out. Anyway, there is a really nice spot the other side of this spot here on Park tonight, but the right at the top is closed for construction, so we weren't able to make it from our direction. There's no way to pass through it, so we, we kind of may do here, and it's fine. We did chuck a couple of big stones behind the wheels because we thought if the handbrake goes, we're dead. We'd, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got five days left in France because we've taken two out to rest and recuperate. Um, so we're just gonna jam pack as much in as possible um, and also try and seek cooler climates because even this morning, it's warm up here and it was really chilly last night. And if you look east from the highest point up there, you can just about see the start of the French Alps and it just stretches out for as far as you can see it's insane and uh yeah so let's have some brekkie and let's move on if i told you we were going close to the alps would you be a little bit excited no oh. <laughs> of course i would but before we leave mont ventoux we visit the memorial of british cycling legend tom simpson Britain's most successful professional cyclist and Olympian, who tragically died at the age of 29 on this stage of the 1967 Tour de France. His death was caused by a fatal combination of performance-enhancing drugs, alcohol, heat and exhaustion. Back in the 60s, there were no doping controls like there are today. His memorial is now a pilgrimage for many cyclists. So we're now going to make our way down from the mountain to the nearby town of Sceaux, which is in the lavender region of Provence, the famous part. Um, but hopefully we will manage to catch the tail end of the season because we're currently filming this in early August, which ideal time is, I think, end of June, start of July. So, uh, and the rest of July really, but it's kids' summer holiday, so. That's a top tip from me, so let's go and see if we're in luck. 
Waking up that morning, we thought the summit of Mont Ventoux was busy. It soon became apparent that there was a big professional road race later on that day. The Mont Ventoux Denivelle Challenge. Spectators lined the road and the traffic was relentless. We were glad to get out of the chaos. This is what happens when you follow the phone sat nav and want to try and get out of everyone's way too quickly. You get stuck down a lane in France with wheel span. <laughs> Flora isn't a four by four. So we've now got to work out how the hell we're gonna get ourselves out of this one. We were meant to be going down this path here, but luckily we walked that first and that was a definite no go. So we're trying to turn around here, and as Meg said, we've lost traction, which I didn't think was gonna happen because there's quite big stones here. And now we're in a bit of a predicament, so what we're gonna try and do is get the van facing forward again and just try and reverse down this really narrow path, which is hard enough to come down forwards. Uh, it's kind of one of those situations where, like, what happens now? Like, where, where does this end? So we're gonna try and get something underneath the front wheels and hopefully get some traction and just get the van pointing in the right direction. That was all right, that was. My heart's going and I feel like a bit of an I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> this is only really the second time we've got proper stuck, like up the Pyrenees in the yeah. snow. That was that was scarier because that was freezing cold, middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, so we're going to try and reverse. Well, Meg's going to try and reverse this very narrow path, but we think in a few hundred meters, possibly. There was a house. There's a house, maybe a turn. So uh, <laughs> yeah, my heart's pounding. I feel sick. I just wanted to see lavender. <laughs> Smell of um, clutch and brake in the air, isn't there? <laughs> I hate right. it when we do things like this. I know, we're so stupid. Anyway, at least we didn't go down there because that way is horrendous. So back we go. Don't trust the phone sat nav anymore. Oh. It's times like these that we're really happy that we don't have a much bigger van. Our sat nav actually knows our dimension, so it'll avoid taking us down certain roads, but the phone just said, oh, that's the quickest route. And it's ridiculous. That's our fault for just following it blindly. You know, when you run through a million scenarios, like, yeah. what, a helicopter, we're gonna get lifted out of here? Yeah, crush you, drop a queen. <laughs> no, I was just thinking, it's, it's like we don't put ourselves in this situation very often. No. But I tell you what, my driving's come a long way since we left home 30 months ago. I thought that wasn't too bad. Yeah, that was good. Might have given Flora a few uh, go faster <laughs> stripes on the side with the branches. I'm glad we paid for the full body work to be carried out before we left. <laughs> it's just a rough and tumble of the road, isn't it? Well, we, this is someone's house, we better go. Yeah. Oh, after that drama, we made our way towards the lavender. Now in early August, our best chances of seeing the blue blooming fields were here, in the higher regions of Provence. We managed to see the few remaining purple fields and visit the quaint gift shop selling all things lavender, from essential oils to soaps and face creams. As I have mentioned before, the best time to visit the lavender region is from mid-June to mid-July, depending on the year's rainfall and temperatures. Well, that was particularly unexpected. We just stopped off at one of our lavender stops, had a little mooch about, then all of a sudden, it was all action. Um, we encountered some more closed roads, which is a bit frustrating up in the town, so we had a loop around to find our way here. And luckily, we hadn't jumped in the van to drive back up the road, because that's exactly where the cyclists were coming from. Like, I don't know what would have happened if we'd accidentally gone. And at such speed as well. My dad would have been in his element. He loves the Tour de France and stuff like that. But for Very. us, it was just a bit stood there like, oh my God. Very intense. So we're hoping most of them have passed on now. Yeah. We must return to this place when it's in full bloom. There are so many lavender experiences from distilleries and festivals to the famous abbey, Notre Dame du Sunonc. This has given us a great taster of what it's really like. 
So we've driven for a few hours through Provence and the lavender region and to be honest, there isn't that much left. We did get a few little bits and pieces but that was really high up, not too far away from our camp spot. But imagine all this with beautiful blue flowers. The smells have been epic as well as we've been driving through the region. Really, really lovely. But now it's time to find our camp spot for the evening. We've driven quite a lot of miles already, but it's just a little bit further, about an hour, to the Verdon Gorge. Let's hope we find a nice spot for tonight. Yay! So we've made it to the gorge, epic drive, but so much traffic, it's rather busy and we're going to call it a night here. Hopefully it's not one of the top gorge dogging spots because I can't be bothered to drive on anymore. <laughs> so this is not the way we usually travel and we wouldn't recommend it. The video is probably going to be a bit skitty because of it. We don't usually do so much driving so we're both quite tired. Um, yeah. It's a Thursday and tomorrow's vlog isn't ready and up yet so we're going to call it an early <laughs> night, sit and finish this off, yeah. do the washing up, have a cup of tea and we'll see you tomorrow for the epic views of the gorge. Yeah, sorry this, this video hasn't been like ish, pizzazz like the, some of the others have been but this is travelling out of necessity, trying our best to get little glimpses on the way but it's tough and the stressful situation where we got stuck earlier that could have been disastrous so i keep having like real like overwhelming waves of relief that we're not still stuck down that road in the middle of nowhere so yeah yeah plenty more to see tomorrow hopefully slightly more easy day tomorrow of what i've got planned um, so we'll see you in the morning Bit of breakfast for the workers. Is it gonna be ready? The video? Yeah. I think so. It's gonna be a tight deadline. I don't know if you can hear the fans whizzing on the laptop, but it's just exporting. That's when it all gets compiled into one file ready for upload. Um, as long as there's no mistakes in it, we should be good. Uh, we just need to find a bit of internet later on. But uh, yeah, that's not too bad. I feel, feel quite good about it. Good. Right, breakfast time, and then we'll go and check out some nice views of this gorge. Ah, uh, yep, and then I guess we should get some miles underneath our belt again. Mm, got a nice drive today planned everyone, I'll tell you more about that later. Right, we'll go down this road, have a look for some views, then head to the nearest town, and then we are hopping on the Rue de Napoleon, which is a very nice mountain road which is going to take us into the alps but we've got a few bits to do before then so just hold tight with us all right so once again we're on the move and i can already tell this is going to be a scenic drive to say the least i know we mentioned this yesterday but this is not our style to be moving every day it's absolutely exhausting Oh, how do you feel? Yeah, exhausting is the word and like, there's just not enough time to do things thoroughly. I mean, I'm not even sure where we are geographically. It's as if we've got a bit of a thing for gorges. It only feels like last week we were in one of the deepest gorges in Europe, but this week we find ourselves in the deepest gorge, or near the deepest gorge, in France. <laughs> the Gorge de Verdon is an impressive and incredibly beautiful river canyon. It's 25 kilometers long, with walls that are 700 meters deep, which have been formed by the Verdon River. Over the ages, the turquoise green water has eroded its way through the limestone rock. It's a very popular tourist destination, not only for nature lovers, but for more thrill-seeking visitors too. 
with a wealth of water sports, hikes and outdoor activities. So we're heading out of the gorge now and we've driven past loads of really cool little campsites. There's loads of activities down here like kayaking, gorge walking, I think, and uh, white water rafting and all sorts. I think, you know, if we weren't under this, the pressure of time, we could probably spend a few days here and actually have quite a bit of fun. Um, France is definitely somewhere that we'll come back to at some point, maybe by itself, because, it, you know, it's only over over the channel, um, just quite accessible, and there's so much to do here. This area in particular looks really cool, but it's just unfortunate that we have to make a move today, isn't it, Megan? Yes, add it to the van life bucket list. We're getting a taster for it though, so that's good. That'll uh, definitely make us want to come back when it's appropriate, maybe slightly more out of season, you know what we're like, because it is busy. That's the only thing right now, it is busy. And now you join us at one of the most picturesque car parks that France has to offer, attached to a large Carrefour supermarket. I mean, the gorge early was all right, but this is just, this is what we came for. Stunning. This is where we have just uploaded the vlog for this week, which would have been possibly up to two weeks ago in real life, but it was a little bit stressful, wasn't it, darling? Yeah, I know some of you are gonna say, don't worry about the content, enjoy your time, relax, but this is the one thing we have to do a week. It's a self-imposed schedule, and we just about got the video up with about 15 minutes to spare. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Usually we have more time to check, everything's all right, but um, it's up and it's live, so we'll see what happens. It's what happens when we drive up into the Alps. No signal, 4G, 3G was spotty at the best. Oh well, stress is done now. Let's continue to drive this lovely mountain road, <laughs> which you haven't been looking at at all. No, but there's six hours left, so <laughs> I'm sure I'll see some of it. The Route Napoleon is one of the most scenic drives through France. It's based on the route marched by Napoleon in 1815 on his escape from Elba. The 325km route begins near Cannes and transports you northwest to Grenoble into the foothills of the Alps. After driving for hours, we finally made it to Lake Annecy. But we're struggling to find a parking spot for the night because it is uber busy and there's two really nice ones that we can't find. <laughs> so we're just discussing do we just make do with what we find or should we go somewhere else without the guarantee of actually finding somewhere? Mm, I'm tired. Yes. My back hurts a bit from being sat like for so long in the driving seat. <laughs> You know, should we make more effort to find a nice spot for tonight or just deal with this? Well, the sun's almost down. It's nearly half eight. I don't really know. This is when it's less enjoyable, isn't it? Yeah. Got lovely plans for tomorrow. So does it really matter where we stay tonight? Not really, but there isn't much scope at the moment, is there? Mm. Good morning from Annecy Lake. We didn't film very much last night because it was getting on. We were very tired and it was quite difficult to find a camping spot here. It's quite an affluent area so wild camping doesn't really happen too much around here. So we ended up staying in a not very glamorous uh, lay-by with bins but you know that's how it goes sometimes. So we've now made it and we're now parked on the cycle path in Annecy. We've got some freshly baked croissants, freshly baked yesterday to be fair, and some coffee and then we're going to make our way into Annecy Centre. 
So with this area being so popular, one of the biggest issues is parking. However, we've been lucky enough to find this little spot. And something we didn't consider until we parked up next to it, you can probably hear it, there's a really nice cycle path all the way into Annecy. So, thank you Mike. The bikes are back, tip top condition, <laughs> thanks to his handiwork. The chain's all lubed up and I think he fixed the brakes a little bit. We've pumped the tires up and hopefully it's about a 20 minute cycle ride, which would be really nice. We haven't used these, I'll just, for a while. <laughs> Possibly over seven months, I'm guessing. I, I dread to think. Germany was probably the last time, unless we did it in yeah. Spain at all, did we? I'm not, no. The bikes are perfect for this and there's so many people on the path today. It's beautiful, it's ideal. Let's go and explore the centre. What a lovely bike path, that was really, really nice. It's made us realise why we packed the bikes in the first place, even though recently we contemplated never taking them on a trip ever again. Perfect place for bikes. Right, let's park up and go and explore the centre. We wandered around the stunning Velville, or Old Town nicknamed the Pearl of the Alps, and you can totally see why. The hanging baskets of blooming flowers drape the old bridges that arch over the turquoise canals. Seen as though we'd got all dressed up in our best clothes, we decided to treat ourselves to a regional classic. For lunch in the Alps, it had to be tartiflette. A dish similar to dauphinois potatoes with the addition of bacon lardons and rebluchon cheese. Delicious. So it's not until you stop cycling and the breeze stops hitting you that you realise how hot and sweaty you've become. I've actually had a few minutes to dry off so I'm not too bad now. However, our next activity, if all goes to plan, should help alleviate the sweatiness yeah. and the heat. For today's afternoon activity, we hired paddleboards and went for a float on the cleanest lake in Europe. For two hours hire, it cost us 36 euros for the both of us. It was a great way to get out on the water and away from the busy tourist beaches. We had great fun and it was really refreshing. As you can tell from those wobbly knees, we were very much beginners, but it doesn't take long to get used to the balance required. That was amazing. We love supping, don't we? Yeah, we used to have one many moons ago, but we sold it because we thought, yeah. let's get two surfboards. They'll be much more useful around Europe. The future of Flora and the Novice Explorers will definitely have a sup board or two, most yeah. definitely. Uh, we thought two hours was quite a long time to be on the lake, but actually it was ideal. We could like have a bit of a swim, have a sit down. It's just so leisurely. Isn't yeah, it? really enjoyed it. Really, really, really like that. So today and the last few days have been really, really good. It's just a real shame that we haven't had the time that we usually have to make a really informative video and get the drone out and stuff like that. We just haven't had the time. We, we realized how much we enjoy our leisurely travel, especially when it comes to like uh, filming and stuff. Yeah. You can say, okay, we missed the sunset here, but let's wait till tomorrow. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's been a bit of a shock to the system, hasn't it really, since Sardinia yeah. and being able to do things at our own pace. And also one thing that we've really found, well, I found difficult is when we're in Sardinia, everything is less than a, what, three hours from top to bottom of the island <laughs> if you get on a motorway. Yeah. But now we've been caught out a few times, just like in the next couple of days, we've got, just over two days to drive 
for between 11 and 8 hours depending on if we're going to go for a toll or not so that's over the two days but that's yeah. still going to be at least five hours a day depending what we do so we'll probably have to stop the filming for now because we just cannot do it anything no. justice however what we've seen from france because we've always just zoomed through what we've seen over the last few days has been so good that we're definitely going to come back and do it justice explore spend a lot of time here and um Maybe not in, in the middle of the summer because it is absolutely roasting still, mm. but yeah. Yeah, but we're hoping to pick the camera up again, maybe for a night stop just before we get on the tunnel. Yeah, first experience for us both with a vehicle on the tunnel. Yeah. So that'd be interesting. And uh, that's about it really from us. Yeah, so I know we don't need to apologize, but sorry this hasn't had all the pizzazz and all that stuff that we normally I think it's had plenty of pizzazz because just well, remember maybe. we kicked off on Mont v v Vent. I know with I the suppose bloody there race has, there has been pizzazz but we like a little bit more anyway this has probably been a bit more real um, and yeah we've probably shown you a bit of the driving but we've done so much <laughs> it gets a bit uh, yeah as lovely as these surroundings are it's incredible it does get a bit tedious after all so like if you've got anything to comment feel free down below what have we missed in france what would you like us to see next time on the next adventure whenever that may be and if you haven't already subscribe yep and we'll see you in the next one where we will be touching uk soil for the first time in 13 months or so i don't know i wonder what he was going to say then <laughs> touching cloth <laughs> as we get onto english motorways and don't know which side of the road to drive on <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. For now. But oh go on then. No, go on. Do it again, no. do it again. Cal, <laughs> do it again. Cal. Au revoir. Au revoir.